Hello everyone. We are the students of the Department of Chemical Engineering IIT Bombay and this is group 17. The topic for our course project is optimization of thermal control in buildings and this has been done as a part of the course CL246 heat transfer. Our study aims to address the issue of thermal discomfort faced by residents in modern day high rises. We propose to solve this problem using a design based approach along with the use of phase change materials a non-conventional new age technology. We have used simple heat transfer concepts, mathematically modeled them, and then performed steady state and transient state analysis to bring about intended results. Our solution devises a way to maintain optimal indoor temperatures in the most economic and energy efficient manner possible. In this video, we will be taking you on an interesting journey with us, where we tell you how we came up with this idea, worked on the approaches, and finally brought about results, which, when implemented, can change your perception of thermal comfort. Stay tuned to find out more. While conducting a literature survey, we came across several papers that highlighted the issues of thermal control in buildings. Diseases like sick building syndrome have become increasingly common, and the demand for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems have increased at an alarming rate. To test if this was true, we conducted a survey. Much to our surprise, 52% people responded showing their dissatisfaction with the current thermal dynamics, such as humidity and airflow in their residences. Thus, it was fairly deductible that modern constructions try to provide comfort at the expense of energy, even as the world faces an energy crisis. However, this hardly solves the problem. Residents still complain of poor health, and this is often due to poor thermal designs, resulting due to the lack of time and use of cheap materials to save on construction costs. This led to the inception of the idea optimizing thermal comfort in buildings in an economic and energy efficient manner. Hello, this is Ankit, a planet from the G17 group. Uh, I'll be discussing about the control volume that we took. We are considering house as our entire control volume in the big picture, uh, with the surrounding temperature to be around 30 to 40 degrees Celsius and the inside temperature of around 30 degrees Celsius. Here we study the heat losses to the house, which includes majorly uh, the losses to the walls and through the rooftop. Uh, for simplicity, we are neglecting the furniture present in the house so as there is no radiation between the objects and the walls. Most of the radiation that comes into play will be through the rooftop surface and not through the walls. Now moving towards a system on which we worked upon, as of our research, we found out that most of the losses were through the walls and rooftop of our house. Uh, our idea was to include the air packets in shape of honeycomb structure and do a descriptive and numerical study on how we, this change affects the overall heat losses to the walls. Uh, we also had a good research on how we can include phase change materials in our walls. In this video, you could see how we encapsulated the air packets in shape of honeycomb structure in between the walls. Now, talking about the heat transfer modes that comes into play, what we focused majorly was on conduction through the walls with the design that we proposed earlier and convection in the air gaps of honeycomb structure cavity and also the free convection of air on inside and outside of the wall. Another heat transfer mode that we studied was radiation through the top surface. Uh, this summarizes the control volume that we considered. The furthermore detailed study of how this issue has been solved will be discussed ahead. Thank you. Integral balance. For steady state, we will be using the concept of overall heat transfer coefficient to find the total resistance of both normal and composite walls, and then find heat and heat fluxes with the equations Q is equal to delta T divided by R total and Q double dash, which is heat flux, that is equal to Q divided by area. Control volume for this problem is the wall having inner and outer surfaces as the boundaries. We have conduction heat flux through the wall along with convective heat fluxes in air gaps and at the inner and outer surfaces of the wall. Room temperature is taken as 30 degrees Celsius and the surrounding temperature as 5 degrees Celsius. Materials used to make wall are plaster and concrete. For normal wall, plasters make the inner and outer layer of the wall and concrete being the center part. For composite wall, the central part of concrete is replaced with honeycomb structure so as to introduce air gaps within the walls. 
for simplicity we will be using seven unit of hexagonal structure to calculate all the fluxes these units when repeated can be used to calculate heat transfer through the entire wall a concrete and a cavity in the given equation are simply the area of concrete and cavity part of single unit of hexagon critical dimensions are stated in the technical problem we are interested to find the heat flux through both types of walls and for that we have to calculate total resistance of walls as well for transient state our control volume is the entire room along with the walls outer surfaces of pair of opposite walls as the boundaries we have transient conduction inside control volume and convection outside in this problem we are interested to show comparison of time taken for certain amount of temperature drop at the center of the room also we are interested to find the temperature drop at the outer surface of composite walls when the center of the room has temperature drop of certain amount now let's talk about various types of heat transfer modes in our system let's look at the conduction mode of heat transfer conduction occurs mostly through the walls we have neglected conduction through air because air acts as an insulating material with thermal conductivity being very less conduction through walls is calculated for normal and composite walls and the calculation part is shown later in the presentation coming to convection the convective heat flux between room and wall is equal to the conduction flux through walls which is also equal to the convective heat flux between the surrounding and the wall convective coefficients h in and h out are found with proper nu correlations and for transient problem convective heat flux is calculated at time t by calculating temperature of outer surfaces equation used to calculate heat flux is shown below we have assumed laminar flow of air inside the room and in surrounding and therefore use proper nu correlation to find h out and h in by taking properties of air at temperature 278.15 and temperature 303.15 kelvin respectively talking about radiation radiation usually takes place through roof and not from the walls line of sight angle for the walls is almost 90 degrees thus cos theta almost going to zero and thus the value of radiation is significantly very low therefore initially we have neglected the radiation heat flux in our calculations however after calculating conduction and convective heat fluxes we calculated radiation to verify if our assumption was true or true or false and we get that radiation flux is indeed significantly very low this helps us in taking some assumptions being radiation is very less compared to conduction and convection and hence we have neglected them in all the calculations for steady state as well as transient state given is a textbook statement of the actual problem in the part a we have to show that the resistance of composite wall is more than that of normal wall and then we have to show that the heat flux through composite wall is less required values for this question are given below which consists of thermal conductivities velocities lengths of plaster brick and composites this slide shows the geometry of both types of walls in normal being plaster concrete and plaster and in composite wall being plaster concrete l composite which actually has the honeycomb structure in it concrete and then plaster for the b part we have to show the time taken for temperature drop of certain amount x at the center of the room having normal walls is relatively more than time taken for that of the composite walls and also we have to find the temperature drop at the outer surface of the composite walls when the center of the room has temperature drop of x now let's see the temperature profiles of the normal and composite walls for the steady state problem x axis is normal with the surface of the wall and at y axis we will get temperature of different sections of the wall as we can see from x axis so the total width of the wall is 0.286 meters the following is the temperature profile for normal wall and this is a temperature profile for composite wall the main difference between the temperature profiles
for composite and normal walls is due to the honeycomb structure, which is situated between x is equal to 0 0.0882 and 0 0.1404 meter. Now let's see some of the important equations used to solve the steady state and transient state problems along with the assumptions that we took to solve it. Here are the values known and the values to find for the steady state analysis. These are the relevant equations used to solve the steady state problem where R composite is resistance of honeycomb structure of composite wall, R nu being resistance of total composite wall, R normal being resistance of total normal wall and the heat classes. From the numerical results, you can clearly see that the resistance of the total composite wall is greater than the resistance of the normal wall. And hence, heat flux through the composite wall is less than the heat flux to the normal wall. Now, before looking at the calculations of the transient state problems, here are a few of the assumptions that we took to model the problem. Assumptions being that only one pair of opposite wall takes part in heat transfer, thus making it one dimensional problem. And also we have assumed that initially entire control volume, that is the room and the walls are at same initial temperature, 30 degrees Celsius, and later exposed to the surrounding having temperature five degrees Celsius. This helps us to model the problem as a model with transient conduction with convection. Values we found are time taken, temperature of the surface, outer surface, and the convective heat flux respectively. These are all the relevant equations used to solve the problem. And these are the numerical results showing the percentage change in time taken, the surrounding being the temperature of outer surface and heat flux being the convective heat flux. Hello, this is Vishraj and they will be concluding this study now. The study explored two solutions for the problem statement. The first one being the use of composite walls basically a honeycomb structure wall with air gas instead of a regular wall. And the second one being the use of phase change material. Despite the use of air gas with honeycomb structure, we were able to maintain a balance and not compromise on the rigidity of the structure. Further, we observed that in the steady state, the heat flux to the system having composite walls is less than the one with the use of the regular one. This means that there will be less loss of heat through air pollution. We also observe that the use of composite walls gives us a larger time in the transient state. Also, a drop of 18 Kelvin at the wall temperature causes only a drop of 3 Kelvin at the center. The phase change material solution explores the possibility to use materials as storage where we can stock the energy when available and use when needed. Coming to the practical implications, the use unit of analysis was chosen in such a way that it can be extrapolated to a complete building. This therefore provides the basis for an exhaustive calculation further. As temperature change is minimal at the center for a significant temperature change at the wall, the environment of an individual inside the room stays near to constant and thereby causes no discomfort. The use of honeycomb structure provided us with an effective solution of the heat transfer without compromising on the structural rigidity. It is already a proven concept and is adopted at various places already. Therefore, from a design and a practical point of view, it is easy to implement and does not burden the end user economically. As the heat transfer becomes more efficient and more heat is retained, the adoption of this solution will result in lesser energy consumption. A lesser energy consumption is indeed crucial as it will lift up the energy extraction load from the non-renewable resources. A direct implication associated is the saving in energy bills to the end user. Also, as the heat is retained naturally, the solution encourages people to use less air conditioning systems, which have several harmful impacts on the global environment. For this study, we did not consider the heat transfer through the room bottom to simplify the problem. In several cases, it might be important to consider that into calculation, especially when there is a major heat loss to the bottom. It is important to know that the geometry adopted in this study is quite a simplified one. Further study should work on a more complex geometries of the room for a more practical result. 
Lastly, the study of phase change materials excluded out of the scope of the study, and therefore, a deeper exploration can be carried out for further study. Thank you.